Siddhi, you start. Yes. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the centenary celebration of Department of Mechanical Engineering, IIST Shipkur. Today, we are here for the 27th lecture under the centenary lecture series, which is to be delivered by our honorable alumnus, Dr. Daresh Chandra Murmu, on the topic, Metal Additive Manufacturing System, Developing Affordable System. This session will be chaired by Dr. Shubhash Chandra Mondal, who is professor in Department of Mechanical Engineering at IIST Shipur. Over to you, sir. Picard issue. We are not able to hear you, Professor. Sir, please unmute yourself. Good evening, all of you. I welcome Professor Dr. Noresh Chandra Murmu on behalf of the Centenary Lecture Series Committee for the Department of Mechanical Engineering, IIST Shippur on the occasion of 27th century lecture on the topics metal additive manufacturing system developing affordable system uh, dr noresh chandra murmu is currently a senior principal scientist and head of the surface engineering and tribology group at csir durgapur uh, it is also termed, known as cmri durgapur he is also a professor and dean of the faculty of engineering sciences at the Academy of Scientific and Industrial Research. His current research interests include additive and smart manufacturing, graphene composite, and graphene ultra capacitor. Dr. Munmo joined CMERI as a scientist in 2003. Before that, he worked as a scientist in CSIR National Aerospace Laboratories, Bangalore. He received his BE from B College, Calcutta University in 1992. Master of Engineering from the IHC Bangalore in 1994 and PhD from IIT BHU in 2010 in all in mechanical engineering. Dr. Munmu also worked as a visiting scientist in the University of Erlangen, Nuremberg, Germany during 2001-2003 and the Northwestern University of USA during 2011-2012. He is a recipient of the Vazbek Award 2015 National Design Award in Mechanical Engineering, NDRF Award in 2012, co-author of MSEB Best Paper Award, Elsevier, CSR Romo Research Fellowship in 2012, and DAT Fellowship in 2000. He has published over 150 research papers in journals and conferences and six book chapters. He has filed seven patents, including one US patent, and eight copyrights. He is currently an associate editor of the Journal of Institute of Engineers, CDC, and co guest edited the special theme 2017. India reusable launch vehicle technology, the future of space transportation system. His notable contribution include the development and co development of additive manufacturing machine, graphene supercapacitor, coil bearing, EHD ink jet printing. Graphene lubricant for hot forging. Amateur turbine. Dr. Murmu is a fellow of the Indian National Academy of Engineering. I welcome Dr. Murmu. Please start your valuable lecture. Can you see? Yeah, it's coming. Yeah, it's coming. Yeah, yeah. I'm audible. Yeah, you are audible. 
Uh, good afternoon, sir. I think uh, I thought that it would be mostly attended by the students, but now I can see a lot of stalwart in our areas. So it is it's making me a little nervous anyway. So my topics uh, which I selected today is uh, metal additive manufacturing because I particularly choose this area because I feel it will be very important to show that how machine can be developed and make it work in conditions. So that is the one of the area which uh, I primarily work in CMRI. Uh, okay. Now let me give a little uh, brief of what exactly is a direct energy deposition systems. There's a lot many systems. I presume that it will be known, so I didn't go through that. So it is basically the direct laser deposition system, so which works a very simple formula. It is that the laser beam will be coming through that nodules, especially coaxial nodules, and then powder will be uh, powder will be uh, grown through this, you know, supplied through this nozzle, and then the laser meltings uh, together to making this printing. So this is the basic concept of that. Now, in this case, so why exactly in, uh, it is required? The one of the major reasons that direct energy deposits have the ad advantage is the true metallurgical bonding is possible, and second is that near nearset manufacturing can be done, then low input, of course, minimum parts and exhaustive materials, and these are the automatic control. So there's a lot of advantages up there already. So what we are targeting here, as you can see this, this one of this uh, picture from the POM USA, that uh, heat affected zone can be reduced and interface will be free of corrosion. That's a basic advantage of that. On, of course, with the improvement of feedback control, that can be further improved. So we'll come to that, how we have solved these things. Of course, it gives you better microstructures, reduced cost and what prices will be there. So these are the advantages in that. Now, once we develop, try to develop our systems, we require essentially the three, this is the essential systems required for developing these metal additives. One is a laser, CAD CAM system should be there, then of course CNC, then sensor, then metal powder feeder. And now when we try to develop this uh, system, so we worked in different foundations, we different formulas. So what we try to do is that generally uh, it is a standard flow chart will be there. 3D CAD model, then slicing, then metal deposition system. Of course, we are working on the system, energy delivery, powder feedback, and CNC. And then, of course, the other things will be the powder properties, physical process. So these are the whole gambit of this, uh, gambit of the activities which requires to be optimized in order to get the system in working conditions. So at the end, if you can keep these whole things in order, probably you can get the better surface finish and better microstructure out of that. Now we started with the design and of course the skills just try, try to give you very basic things why we utilize that. Now one of the things, uh, although we neglect it in the design part is that when the flatness of the simple table, simple table sometimes we don't consider that is very important in our case. So design uh, flatness of the deposition system is one of the things and then low deformations, of course, uh, such kind of things, machine development, stiffness is a design criteria. Then there should be low vibrations and of course, electric hardware positions. These are the few things which is required in our developing, when I, in the designing these things. And based on that, we have come out with the different designs. And of course, as you can see, that uh, we have done different model analysis by in, uh, in ANSYS. And after doing that, we have a little bit optimized. And after optimizing, uh, we have made that. And then next come the positioning system that uh, of course we selected the different positioning systems like uh, granite, 
uh, left torsos. Then, of course, you got the x axis, y axis, z axis, and b and c axis we have taken. And these are the few elements we needed for developing the stages. Now, there is a different configuration which we tried out. And after a uh, lot of uh, trials, we found the base beast analysis based based uh, model basically is a one of this uh, can uh, one of the best design we could have so based on that we have selected the bottom we can see the granite and full systems are basically the granite system we have gone through this is one of the selection that low uh, thermal expansion and many other properties are associated with that so this is the specification finally we came out for developing the uh, systems as you can see it here this is the this is the uh, plate, and then over this plate we kept this granite table, and then we put the positioning here and some of the axis along with the nozzle, and this is the schematic diagram. So we try to keep this there, and of course then we require the laser power feeder is another two systems we will be selecting slowly out of that. But again, when we are trying to do these things, the major problem came that the selection of the powder and also there should be powder coating. And there is a lot of agglomerations will be there. We need to do these things. So this is something we worked on that. Of course, uh, I am not very expert in this. We had the uh, scientists from chemical background who did all these activities, especially the polymer coatings on the uh, powder. And one of the most critical uh, problem in the system design was that the designing the coaxial nozzles. As you can see in the coaxial nozzles, there is a copper tip, then there is a pulling jacket, and then water pulling nozzles and lens positionings, and there will be the power channel for the powder filters. And there should be some kind of uh, some kind of pulling motions so that uh, over mixing is possible. But when delivery will be there, delivery will be very targeted. And also, there is another issue was that the gas for lens cooling because uh, a laser will be coming through the uh, from these nozzles, and this will create the trouble for us. So this is for the uh, tentative designs we came out after a lot of things. I will show you that how exactly after the basic design we have uh, optimized that. So. One of the major issues was that uh, since uh, none of this information was available, so what we did uh, is that uh, little investigation in multiphase flow, and also we did some laser uh, material interactions. And metal, of course, this 2D model for powder, we have done that. And based on that, we tried to get this nozzle angle determination was there. Then powder flow distributions, and basically the determination of the clad dimension. So, Purpose was that first model, 2D model of powder flow was that we should be able to find out the nozzle angle. Second, we did some kind of uh, further studies on flow, powder flow, which will give this powder flow distribution and start stand up distance for maximizing the power capture efficiency. And third, of course, is the determination of current dimensions and validation of the integrated model with the experiment. So that is the thing. So this is the one of the uh, mess symmetric mesh we have taken. I'm not going much detail on that. And this is the domain we have utilized uh, for that. And these are the, you can see it, number of element and axis symmetric model. And of course that, uh, these are the governing equations. So I'm not again giving much details because uh, this is the standard uh, methods are used and it is reported. And by standoff distance and concentration of particle, from there we basically try to get this design, standoff distance, where what should be the standoff distance between the nozzle and the substrate. So by this simulation, we try to get that some primary value out of it. We tentatively came very close to uh, 10 meter, uh, 10 uh, millimeter, 1 millimeter. And then we did some design of experiment here with just very good level of design experiment to get some kind of value. And by this, uh, by using that very old method that time we did that. And then uh, from the simulations, basically the simulation, okay, that's not working anyway. Uh, 
And these are the powder of flow simulation. This, to buy these two simulations, we are trying to get the capture the what should be the uh, what should be the our uh, area of penetration, area of where it can be uh, it can land on the uh, on the surface. Then that is the way we got uh, some kind of design information about the nozzles. Next came this uh, laser material interactions, and from there we tried to get this basically the different parameters of powder. So here again, the same uh, standard formulations was used, it's nothing uh, was there. So I'm not going details of that. And based on that, basically simulations, we came out of different contour, different uh, directions, like what are the thermal profile. And this was the major findings was that, that uh, velocity and temperature distribution, dimension, of course, we got the dimension of the mail pool and correlation among the laser scanning speed, laser power scanning speed and fit. So these are the major information we got, major uh, information we got from the simulations. And now we try to use these information for developing the system. And that was the basic purpose uh, of this simulation. And then these are the little more uh, as also after getting this value, we did more targeted way of uh, calculations because to get the exact value. And from there, simulation result we got into, these are the, some of the uh, summary we got by exact calculations we did like 10 to 14 years selected range. Then this powder concentration we had obtained and we got these are the parameters. And uh, core regions we got somewhere from 0.8 to 1.0 mm, and male pool, of course, was there in uh, 3,400 K, 400 K, and laser at 800 watt. Of course, we use the 800 watt for the scanning speed. So these are the information we got it from uh, similar sense, and so that that could uh, we could utilize this for development. Now, once we got this nozzle design and some configurations. Then last part was that we have to make the systems by using the controller system, controller. But now major first, uh, major problem that we suffer in this development is that we use the single motor and try to work out the feedback control systems. And these are the, uh, we use that uh, Targo UMEC, that Delta Taos and this motor, but after that, we finally come out with the four, uh, five axis motion configurations. And by using the five axis motion configuration, finally uh, we could uh, make this uh, systems working by connecting this proper uh, stage. And of course, this PLC programs we did, then custom develop through the data sensing, we have done that. By doing this, we could manage the five axis motion control out of that. But another problem was that like uh, most of these controllers are designed for the machine and it generally goes out of this uh, edge. When it comes to the edge, it generally goes out of the uh, um, CAD areas. So in this case, but in case of uh, um, generally what happened, that is a, it uh, slowly uh, comes down very slowly at the edge and then return back with the high speed. But in case of this additive, it will come slowly, then what will happen that there will be excess deposit at the edges. And to overcome that, then we have come out of different strategies. And by this different strategy, we, we could overcome that issue by changing little hardware or existing hardware and also in the software part. So this is the technical issues which uh, we faced uh, in our work was that amplifier needs energized and some of the separate wires control ports are only available. And build the PLC logic, we see the command. Then uh, we needed certain additional safety measures and additional electric brake was used for the vertical axis. And all, con all axes are configured to over trouble in software limit. And sudden jar was another thing, so we used the extra dynamic baking register. And then physical limit, uh, for physical limit, basically develop relay circuit to bring into the unified logic. 
and few uh, few physical switches unable to delay, drive the delay switch. So this was a separate transistor driven relay circuit was inverted logic with inverted logic we use that. And of course there is a, some tuning and all these things, refactoring errors we did that. And by by which we could manage this system development. Then next another problem was that which was a little bit ambitious that time. So we worked with the IIT Kharagpur, this is the area, that there is a staircasing uh, issue in this uh, existing STL software. So we thought that let us try for developing the STL uh, direct slicing. So it was, we started with the direct slicing of the CAD model. So, so what we did, basically different circuits is that BGR, B spine, all these things. So we, we decided to go for this uh, MATLAB based software, where basically slicing were done directly at the uh, computer level, at the CAD level, and slice data was fed into the controller. And that way we can stare casing effect, we could uh, eliminate, but uh, of course, this software was not very uh, handy, and we later on we found it's very difficult to use day-to-day -day cases. So it was not uh, uh, other than experiment, it was not much much was used. So these are the post loop systems we came out so that uh, we can come out with the better sensors, uh, height sensor. With the height sensor, we could. Uh, check the height and adjust the controller. So we added the closed loop for better dimensional properties. So based on these things, we basically came out with this. This is the nozzle design, so you can see it here. Then this is the overall control structures. Okay, uh, these are the switch synchronous, and I'm skipping that. Then based on that, you can see the different geometry features we tried to do. This is the very early features. Later on, we could put much better feature out of that. So early features and cloud height increases was difficulties was there. So we try to try, try to solve the different uh, different control strategy way. And these are the some early work we faced during the cladding. And then finally, after this cladding, we have developed this further parts with the better surface finish and control. And then we did some parametric studies, and finally, finally we got we could get this is the basic uh, system that we develop uh, in our uh, CMA. Right? That is the, this is the specifications we could get out of that, and this is the full system. You can see the feeder, and the full things are enclosed in this, so we can name it. Metal additive and full control things was in kept here. Uh, this is the we we kept maximum power is hundred watt, but eight hundred watt was mostly used. And finally, the accuracies and resolutions uh, and also surface value we got very good surface finish out of that. And so this is the basically the final.
So if that, uh, that system is done, now next present work which are targeting is that single crystal out of the same machines and also certified and be basically controlling the microstructure at the uh, printing level. And of course, another activities we have started is the uh, digital twin for additive manufacturing. This is very preliminary work, and we have started working on that. And uh, with that acknowledgement, um, Dr. Lohar was a major contributor in this project, then D. Chatterjee and also our writer from IIT Kharagpur, and also finally the Department of Science and Technology uh, for funding this project. Thank you all. Thank you, Dr. Mungu, for your valuable presentation, live video, and nice presentation also. Now it is open for discussion. Congratulations, Dr. Mungu. I'm very happy to see the development because yeah. uh, the plan to develop uh, laser-based uh, direct metal digital Manufacturing was taken up at CMRI, you know, in 19, uh, 2007, I yeah, yeah. Seven. 2007. And uh, Professor Jyoti Majumdar made a number of visits and uh, some MOU was signed. But it is a difficult task which you have completed. I must congratulate you. Of course, you have done. Here, I find that you have taken up a rectangular uh, or Cartesian system for your manipulator, isn't it? So, yes. Uh, Jyoti Majumdar Singh was a serial manipulator and uh, CMRI plan was to have a parallel manipulator to improve accuracy. Mm. So your thing is somewhat similar to that. Very good. Excellent work. And have you checked the density, what you have got? Pardon? Density. What density you achieved in the position? Yeah, density, uh, not exactly density, but we have uh, tested the uh, Mechanical, different mechanical properties, especially the tensile and other properties you have tested, mm -hmm. which you got very comparable to the, very close to that, because we could make a good number of samples. The mm -hmm. student made that, uh, I think, 10 to 12 sample was made, and it is comparable to the parent materials. With COP, of course, it will reverse side, not exactly the same, but there is a little reverse mm -hmm. side. Uh, so one, but for the same, for, for, but for when you try to do for the inconel and other things, there is an issue. There is a depletion of the chromium. Mm -hmm. So, so I that's think why uh, uh, here you can deposit, I think, a semi two dimensional kind of thing, two and a half dimensional objects you can create through this, isn't it? Yeah, no, you can do uh, full five axis, but this is the very early stage of development. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, you uh, have developed the parameters, which is very difficult and very important also. Then yeah. you can change your manipulator and you can apply the same thing, you know, to have a more generalized case. I'm sure you'll be able to do that in the very near future. Yes, sir. So Thank I'm extremely happy that ultimately CMRA <laughs> did develop this, you know, though it took some more time, but uh, I must congratulate Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> Doctor, Thank you may I put in a question, please? Ali's here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Dr. Munmo, thank you very much for giving so much of information, say, within 20 minutes. Okay. Now, I have got, I think, uh, one thing I can uh, ask what Dr. Amitabh Ghosh was asking about density. Along with that, probably you can throw some light on the porosity. That is number one. Yeah. And number yeah, two, yeah. when you are talking about the roughness, Along with that, I would like to ask at one point, I saw that the uh, accuracy of X, Y, these two axes of CNC is 50 micron per meter. And now I think why it is so coarse for a, an operation like this, why it is so coarse, 50 micron per meter for X and Y, because this have, has got a bearing on the uh, roughness you achieve. So can you throw yeah. some light on it? Yeah, okay. Sir, so actually major problem was that uh, although we can have the better uh, stage here, but uh, major problem was that how we are not able to, we don't have much control over this flow of materials. 
and because that determines the size and shape of the metals, size and shape of the uh, ultimate parts. So there we could, uh, this I probably could have been shown. There is a few other work I didn't see it, show it here. So there we could uh, get the dimensions uh, very close to from 0 0.1, 0 0.2 variations are there. 0.1 to 0.2 variations are there from the targeted dimension. Uh, Dr. Mumu, uh, sir, may I ask a few questions? Like uh, uh, the powder, it must be nanoparticle, otherwise it will get jammed. That is one of my assumptions. One. Yeah. Two, this 100,000 watt uh, is quite a bit of power. And then no. I can, sir, can I get three, four questions, sir. No. You can add them up together. So I know in real life application, one application that comes to my mind, that is adding the carbide tip to the tool head. Uh, but what other applications, uh, if you can uh, inform uninitiated people like us, then uh, I'll be happy. The powder, if it, it should get uh, blocked, uh, what steps you are taking to unblock the flow of the powder? These are the few questions, please. So first, <laughs> this is very pertinent questions. And uh, if it is blocked, basically, that is why that uh, indigenous, there is a two type of powders are there. Uh, there is a couple of people who are developing the indigenous powders and which we are unable to utilize in this machine is that because it's not very spherical shape. Uh, if it is not very spherical shape, then sometimes it is getting blocked. And if it is getting blocked, there is no other options other than to reopen and unblock that. And there is no other options. Yeah. Uh, there is a very critical problem we face. So why, is, why the that's powder, to, is the powder nano nanoparticles? Nanoparticles, nano nanopart, not nano. It is a micron size. I see. Micron size, but it should be spherical. We try to get it very spherical size particle, mm -hmm. which are generally developed by the different companies for additive manufacturing. But if it is not uh, properly additive, uh, it's not properly uh, spherical. And if you fix, use that, I mean, we have used that for one of the uh, cases and it blocks, it blocks. And uh, for after blocking, there is no other option other than to open and uh, clean that system. There is no other option. And sir, so what few, we have faced. Few real life applications for uninitiated like us, where would you apply this kind of thing uh, to do your uh, welding? Oh, for applications. For yeah. applications, generally, what we are right now targeting to repairing these parts. We are uh, one of the major uh, things uh, we are trying to work out is that we got some of the parts from the defense. The defense application, including uh, single crystal blade. And now it, blades are really cost, very costly. It's uh, almost uh, 70 lakhs or 75 lakhs. So because of the small cracks or small damage, they have to reject that parts. So one of the problem that has been given to us is that can you, can you make some BPR purpose? Some layer, made some layer on that. And if layer can be made, probably they can uh, utilize that turbine blade for the return. But I still see. we are working and let us see that how does things are working. But that will be one of the very, uh, very good kind of use for this basic. And one last question, sir. The thousand watt laser is it quite common or not? I mean, it's, it's not common. Better. Actually, we don't. Although we have kept it uh, thousand watt, six hundred watt is a, a things which mostly operated. Thousand is not required. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Sir. How the concentration of the metal powder is measured? How the concentration of the metal powder deposited is measured? No, that is the uh, capture efficiency. Capture efficiency is basically how much we are delivering. We have the flow meter. How much uh, powder has been delivered and what is this? Uh, total metal weight. It's just very good way we did that. 
and by this way we got captured efficiency somewhere close to uh, 80 to 90 we got that depend on the size to the you know, very yeah. size we got very high mm -hmm. but by different structures you can get uh, very low as low as uh, 80 percent of the we call it capture efficiency kind of thing. Proudly, not audible. Mm. Any question from the speaker? If you are not able to give, <coughs> if your audio is not working, you could put in your question through message box in the chat box. Yeah, yeah. Here, there. Am I audible? Any question from the student side? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. yeah we can hear. And what you are trying to Thank speak? Uh, first, I definitely want to congratulate Dr. Murmu. It was a wonderful presentation. And shame on me. I was a little late. I didn't realize that it started a little early. In any case, let's go back to uh, go back to the chess. Uh, in our system, in uh, in my university, we have got a couple of uh, metal additive uh, machines. Okay, they are very expensive, very pricey. And however, we use a little slightly different system. And the question I have got is that your particle size looks like about 45 micron, give and take. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Now, yeah. And looks like there's an issue in terms of clogging. Yeah. Whereas we do use something like 20 micron. Okay. And yeah. of course, our system is also different. It's a, it's a powder, a big. So we can go by yeah. there and just. Yes, so my question first of all uh, is regarding clogging. Do you think it will make any difference if we can make the particle size significantly smaller, like 20 micron or less? Or you uh, so when we are going for the smaller size particle, basically it depends on the design. Once we once we got that uh, powder, approximately the 40, 30 to 40 micron level powders was available with us. And that we optimized this uh, system, particularly this particular system was optimized on that range. And when we are going for the smaller particle, actually capture efficiency is coming down. If you give a little smaller particle, capture efficiency is coming down. That is the issue we found in uh, using the smaller size of particle. Uh, sorry, I didn't understand the issue. What uh, if it is smaller it's particle? Capture efficiency. Generally, what happened? The amount of uh, powders has been delivered in this substrate mm -hmm. are generally getting carried away away from the surface. So it is called uh, efficiency okay, reduces. Okay, got it. Like got it. Got efficiency. it. Got yeah. got that it. is being reduced. Is it, then, is, yeah. is it not a controlled environment where the uh, the particles should not fly away? You know, it is controlled environment. Uh, the video you saw it, it is for for the making the video purpose. Otherwise, it is fully controlled environment and enclosed. Enclosed, and uh, it is also having certain amount of. Uh, like if there is excess powders are flying here and there, there is a system which will take out that powder out of the systems and then collect it from some outside of this, uh, collect it and keep it aside for that purpose, for, for usable purpose. Interesting, because we never had that issue in our system. So I do not know exactly what the design. And uh, as such, I my question was follow up, if we can make the particle size even smaller. The reason is that what we are thinking in our perspective that as we make the particle size smaller and smaller, the energy requirement significantly drops. Okay. As such, I have seen in my scenario that 
we can use even as low as 100 watt laser to melt glass particles who are about yeah. single micron and sub micron okay and that is one thing uh, we are working on obviously obviously we do not have the answer yet but that's what I'm thinking that your system may be if you have the designability if it is, if it is a open source system and if you have the resources then if you can mix really micron sub micron and i can supply you material if needed uh, in tons and they are not very expensive i can give you glass particles dollar 50 a pound okay so three thousand dollar a ton and i can supply you in tons the challenge will be what i'm trying to figure out at the end of the day is that there's nobody in the world nobody in the world who can make 3d printing with glass particles so and if we can do that we're a wonderful thing so that's the part i'm really interested in, and i'm still working on it and i'm looking for collaboration anybody who's interested to develop a 3D printing system for glass particles, where the glass particle size could be single micron or sub micron. So it's more of a comment rather than a question, but it is a wonderful pre presentation, and I'm sure uh, Dr. Ghosh, uh, with all the must have started all these things, is a wonderful venture, wonderful venture. And the system is so expensive. Seven, eight hundred thousand dollar typically 3D meter printing. So it's you know, thank you, Dr. Murmo. I'll be I'll be touch so later. Sir, is well taken, sir. We just let me discuss with our uh, total group persons and I'll definitely revert back to you. Uh, just, as a, yeah, just as a backup, you might try to do that. Uh, glass melting, and you know, glass melts at about 1400 degrees C. They had yeah. a, they had a really humongous, stupid system. Obviously, it didn't work. The whole system has to be heated up, heated up to that level. And if there is a thermal shock, then the glass particle, the piece will shatter into pieces, 1400 oh. degrees temperature. So it's a challenge. So that's why I am going. In, I was thinking of going in the other, other direction making this particle as uh, small as possible as Ochuda was saying can i go for nano level and their particles are the good thing is that they are available at least in this camp mm. okay, so, 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 question i had uh Norris, uh the yes. particle size i think a lot of discussion is going on i am not sure but uh, have you checked that, that what is the optimal particle size? Because if you make the particle size too small, the clogging tendency may increase again, as it happens in some other cases. So uh, what is the optimal particle size? Have you done any testing or anything? Yeah, 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 there is slight. It is 30 to 40 microns is something which uh, we are using for uh, our purpose. But it's what we find. Mm -hmm. And what about the laser power, uh, depending the on laser the power, although we, sorry, okay. although we are in, having this uh, uh, thousand watt ladder, but using somewhere in the 600 watt, somewhere in 600 watt, and mm -hmm. sometimes it's uh, coming close to the 500 also sometimes, but mostly 600 is the optimal we are working. It is not required beyond that, that's what we found. Good, thank you. I think there is another piece of information I can throw to the uh, audience, uh, learned audience here is that there is an effect of a melting temperature dependence on the particle size, particularly in the nano level for sure. Okay, the temperature, the, it is, it does not, it sometimes the temperature, melting temperature drops as, as low as half of the actual bulk multi melting temperature i have seen in my situation the melting temperature at least softening temperature of glass has been as small as 700 degrees c of yes. course the particle size has to be micron or some micron so that is another you know this other issues there too okay well, let's see we'll try to explore this little detail with our students let's see how what all things we can do
the metal deposit rate, the metal deposition rate that is also, uh, I mean, a prominent function of particle size or overall fabrication uh, rate. Deposition says, uh, a rate is uh, particle, not exactly particle size, it is basically the flow, uh, flow of the powder, powder flow, depends powder. on the powder. No, and also all scanning parameter that we have done similar to the fast we could show it here. Laser material interacts and the, based on that, we have come out with certain value along which we are doing that experiment. But we use that parameter for uh, building the parts. That, that could be another interesting topic in terms of control system that you can control the feed rate, okay, yeah. depending upon a need. And I actually, we did it for plastics that we can just by combining the temperature and the flow rate, uh, feed rate rather, we can control the uh, flow rate for On plastics for sure. Continuous feedback basis. Yes. Yeah, actually, yes. Uh, that is the another, uh, that's a good suggestion. In fact, uh, we are doing for the internal 718. One of the problem with internal 718 is that we are losing the chromium and some parts we are making. And losing the chromium because of the vaporizations and also uneven uh, melting part due to melting. So what we did, we are using the pro hopper and one we are keeping the chromium and we are controlled way we are trying to use that chromium for compensate that things. But still the spectrometer, uh, we are using the spectrometer which uh, is finding a little bit difficult to make online, but still we are working on that. It is basically in situ, uh, controlling the micro controlling the microstructure. Yes, that's what that, we have ongoing activity. Actually, that's a nice uh, uh, PhD topic: how to control the flow rate using temperature, composition, feed rate, etc. That will be really interesting. There. And we are using the spectrometer that uh, yeah, of course, the ocean optics, ocean optics that uh, the spectrometer to get this. Uh, Temperature signal, but not temperature, it's just state using composition signals out of that. On a side note, is there any collaboration going on between this topic at your place, uh, to anybody in IIE state or anybody interested even? I'm just a quick comment type of thing. But is there any interest going on? Dr. Murbu's lab gives us good opportunity for our students. For certain sure, sure. limited exposure, maybe on internship basis or maybe on the job training or summer training. If the faculty can jump in, I would love to go. Yeah, if I this collaborative efforts are needed. Exactly, exactly. That's I'm looking. This is the whole purpose of this centenary lecture series. How to find new opportunities to work together and enhance our research efforts. And, and on a side quick note I'm making here, because I just saw it today, I was looking to send blogs that the number of patents coming out of this institute is very, very low. Okay, very, very low. This could be a wonderful opportunity. Yeah. Yes, collaboration holds the key to success naturally. So we need to enhance that. Sir, well, if Achuda is, sir, no is trying to say something, I think he's mute. Yes, mute. Your subject also. No, sir, I think uh, Achuda is trying to say something. Yes, Achuda. Please unmute. Mute. Okay. What I was telling uh, to Dr. Murmu and to Kamal also, depending on the materials, the base materials being joined, do we change the uh, material of the flux or that remains the same as always? Uh, that what we have showed it here, we have not changed anything. It is the same, like it is a first experiment because after that we have done many other experiments. This is a basic experiment and first we have proven out and here we have not changed anything. The materials remain same. Oh, so it the mother material it. melts and does the process of welding. The flux is just yeah. flux. Yeah, but there is other things, other activity we have not shown here. There we have changed many things. But this this presentation, whatever is wrong, we have not changed anything. It is as it is. Single flow rate also was more or less fixed. 
not much uh, optimized we have done that. Yeah, so not much changes. There will be plenty of work yeah. on this in future. Yeah, yeah. That was not important here, actually. It's a will it welcome, welcome change. Thank you. It's a great thing. Well, if we are done, uh, let me express thanks on behalf of the department and also on behalf of the Centenary Celebration Committee. Let me thank our today's speaker, Dr. Noresh Chandamurmu, for giving this wonderful thank presentation. And we hope to have enhanced collaboration, enhanced cooperation among CMRI scientists at CMRI and teachers at IIST Shippur, not only mechanical, other groups also. I can, for example, metallurgy can also join in easily. So hopefully, we will have. Um, path to collaboration in the future. Uh, let me also thank uh, today's chair, Professor Mondol, who happens to be one or uh, two years junior to Dr. Murmu. So they know each other very well. So it's a wonderful platform yeah. for, for this close interaction. I should also thank uh, senior members of alumni. Professor Ghosh has joined today. Achudda, Kamulda, everybody should also thank Vimanda. Vimanda is playing a catalytic role, helping me out when I look for new contacts in alumni. So thank you, Vimanda. So with that words of thanks, uh, let me... Uh, oh, well, one last responsibility for me. Uh, if we have a copy of our certificate, please show volunteers. Uh, we, on behalf of the Central Distribution Committee, we have a certificate to uh, to, to honor Dr. Murmu. So this is the digital copy, which we'll be sending through email. We do have a hard copy, and that we will we plan to hand over along with the memento. Uh, maybe sometime at CMRI or when you happen to be at Kolkata or around this place, you might hand it over physically here at the institute. So, Thank you, Dr. Mungu. Thank you. Before this conclusion, I, let me let me give little. Since it is a uh, all our alumni of IST, Dujab, IST, Singapore. Well, I I am really grateful to Professor Ghosh. This is basically, if you remember that in 2007, when he asked us to take up the micro manufacturing in uh, CMRI, and that mm -hmm. time uh, Professor Ghosh was a uh, chairman of research council of CMRI. And he was instrumental to uh, uh, to basically connect into the Professor Jyoti Mojumdar and also um, uh, Professor Rahman, Professor Eman. Subsequently, we have interacted a lot of activities we have done. We have not shown it here. And let us make that that time we had the very small lab of uh, maybe some 10, 10 meter by 10 meter size of lab. And mm -hmm. we started with developing the first micro milling machines. And from there, now you can have a almost 5,000 square feet of lab. It's thanks to Professor Ghosh, I think, because of that, his uh, inspiration. There is inspiration for many of and us and many of the departments across the country. Yeah, yes, very, very thankful for that. I, mean, I really grateful that we could, uh, that time we had the only one student. Now we have uh, almost a 30 PhD student right now working. And I really grateful that we initiated in 2007 that Professor Ghosh. Uh, because of his thrust, basically, and not really, if we tell you a little bit that that time we are reluctant to, you know, we have not heard about the micro manufacturing. And when mm. Professor Ghosh told us that you have to take this along with Dr. Naga, uh, that these are the activities you have to do, we are forced to take up that. And out, out of that, now, whatever result you can see that because of the initiation, I think he deserves a little clap from our side. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. It's a lot.